So you want to take off the adapter on your shaft, right? We want this. How do we do this? It's a lot easier than you think. Let's head over to the bench. Be the right club today. Yes! What's going on guys? G2 here. Welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to do a reshafting. So I have here a hybrid. This is actually a, a five hybrid, believe it or not, which I love the five hybrid option over the five iron simply because it's much easier to get that ball in the air. Uh, it has a more predictable spin. So for long par threes, you know, like that 190 to 200, 205 shot, you get a much more consistent ball flight and you're able to drop that ball and land it softly. The problem with five hybrids is when you find them, they usually are in senior flex. Like they don't make five hybrids in stiff flex. It's whatever, for whatever reason, I'm assuming they're thinking the better player would be using a five iron. I find that the value of the five hybrid far outweighs the five iron. But anyway, so this is a Sim 2 Max you can see it's not an adjustable hosel, right? So we have a shaft here into a non-adjustable hosel, but we have a replacement shaft here that we're gonna put in. This is a Nemesis 90 gram stiff flux that has an adjustable hosel. So what we need to do is we need to get this in here, but we have to remove the adjustable hosel and that is gonna be really other than and if everything else in terms of reshafting the process is going to be similar there are a little differences to this one because this already has the grip installed and that tends to make installing the shaft a little bit harder but i'm going to show you how you can mitigate and navigate through something that you want to save a grip on typically when you install a shaft into a head you want to have that grip off because what you're essentially doing is by having the grip on here with the tape, you're creating a pressurized environment inside this shaft. So when you go to install this shaft into the new club, it's gonna wanna push itself out because you're pushing in, the pressure is pushing back at you and it will shoot that shaft out. But I'll show you how to fix that when we get to it. So let's start. The first thing we need to do is remove the head from this one and the adapter from this one. Now over here, I've got my Malpy shaft extraction tool and uh, we've got our stops here that we use all the time. But the one thing you will need for this is a adapter removal kit. Now I bought this off Golfworks. Here's the, the number if you're interested in buying it off Golfworks. I think it was $10. But these are things you can pick up at your local hardware store. And it's simply have little screws like this. These are hex screws, different threads. So the thing about Golfworks, it comes with all the threads that you're, you may possibly run into when you're doing this. So what you do is just go through and find which is gonna be the thread to match your adapter. So this is the thread we can use. Now, if you go to your home store, um, you can just go ahead and simply pick up the screw that'll match your adapter. A washer, now this is a fairly thick washer. If you do go to your, uh, your local um, home improvement store, you may need to use two or three to equal this. It's just nice having it thicker because it just gives you a little bit more support. And you simply put that on like this. You thread this guy all the way in. I like to hand thread. I don't use any kind of tools or uh, wrenches or stuff for this because it's it's just not necessary and now we've created something to pull That adapter off once we heat it up. All right, so we've got our uh, Shaft extraction tool here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna Kind of turn it back a little bit. So we have some extra threads to work with place our shaft in Like so and then we'll Tighten that down, not too hard. Just make sure it's it's nice and snug. And now as we turn this handle, we'll see this arm will start to push against that washer. Now I still will use these just to give me an, a little extra support behind that washer. 
like so. And now we've got a really nice, solid tension on this. There is a little lever here. This is showing you it's in the unloaded position as we continue to put pressure on this. This lever will move over, kind of showing you the tension that you're creating on this adapter. So I'm just gonna use a, uh, a little hand propane torch here to warm this up. Now this adapter does have a ferrule on it. Uh, I could have cut that off, uh, but I don't think it's really gonna bother anything. Uh, I'm trying to stay away from the shaft. You'll see a little smoking. That is the rubber ferrule. Just getting heat all around the adapter. Doesn't take much. Now using our wrench here, we're going to begin to place pressure on that and you'll see this start to move. I'll put my finger here as a reference guide and you'll see that it is slowly moving, slowly putting tension and here we go, we just got our pop. So our adapter is coming off. I will unscrew this all the way. You don't want to twist it off. As tempting as it can be, you just want to Screw this all the way off. We want to make sure that whenever you're pulling graphite, you're using an extraction tool because you need that pressure to be linear with the shaft. You can't do any turning or torquing. You will ruin uh, your shaft. And then here we go. Our adapter is off. It's in perfect condition. And now we have our adapter. Perfectly clean, absolutely reusable. There's nothing wrong with this. The only thing that you may need to get, because it was ruined and they will be ruined in the extraction process, is a new ferrule, which our ferrule is right here. The individuals who installed this, you can see they do, didn't do a great job at cleaning up. When they abraded the shaft, uh, it's not how I would have done it. It would have been a little cleaner. When I do something like this, a reshafting, especially on graphite, uh, I'll usually use a piece of tape and we're gonna put it in there because we're gonna clean it up anyway. And then now when you go to your grinder or sander or whatever, this tape will protect the paint on that shaft so you'll end up with a nice crisp line at the end. So just a little miss on their part. Uh, I see it all the time, it's, it's really nothing new. So before we get into removal of the other shaft that has a club on it. I'm just gonna get a, a sanding sponge. This is my preferred way of cleaning these as opposed to going to the, the belt sander. And I'll just take off any of that residual epoxy. Now had I done this with the, the sander from the beginning, the belt sander, this line would be much crisper. But for what we're doing, intents and purposes, this is fine. So now the last thing we need to do to fully prep this shaft is um, there is epoxy in the physical shaft, right? So that epoxy went through that hole. It's filled up that a little bit. So we need to get that out because, again, when we go to install this in the club, the pressure created inside the hosel with the epoxy is going to be pressing on this, and it's not going to seat. It's going to push itself back out. So I'll just get a small drill bit. We want to create a vent hole. Now because this shaft that we're doing has the grip on, normally what I would do is just drill it all the way through or just punch it down and you could just take it out of the butt end of the shaft. We can't do that here. So we have to be a little uh, more thoughtful in how we do this. So we're just gonna get our drill bit and we're just gonna slowly work our way through that epoxy. I'm not putting any pressure. The drill bit is doing the work here. I don't want it to go back into the shaft because I won't be able to get it out without removing the grip. So now that we have that hole in there, it is loose, the, the epoxy plug, so we can kind of use this to just gently leverage out that little plug that was created. Heat it up a little bit. That'll help loosen that epoxy. There we go. That's it. Now we got it all out. And again, like I said, if you don't have the grip on there, 
doesn't make a difference. You can just push it out. But if I push it out, then you would end up with a rattle. But if you can see in here, now that is perfectly clean. So now let's move to the actual club. This is gonna be pretty easy. We're gonna heat up here. We're gonna remove the ferrule first. Ferrule should be, won't take a lot of heat. Rotating and heating, even heat, okay? Now we'll get a blade here. And now remember, this is graphite, so you could scratch the paint, so try to be gentle. You don't wanna go all the way down, just a little bit, just to expose that ferrule and we'll peel it away. All right, so we'll place this guy in here, torque this forward, get some pressure on it. Now apply our heat to the hosel of the club, not the shaft. Soften up that epoxy a little bit. And then we're just gonna ratchet our pressure on there. You can see our loading bar is moving, so we're putting pressure this way. We're getting up pretty high. And we need to add a little bit more heat. So we should start to see some movement by now. There we go. And again, continue it all the way off. Resist the temptation to twist that head off. Just take the couple extra turns, rotations, and let it come off on its own. Clean up our hosel. All right, so that is nice and clean inside. So this is a 370 collared ferrule, and you can see it sits right in there, and it'll reduce that wobble. I'm just gonna dry fit it just to show you. So once we have that in, that collared ferrule in there, it's not going to wobble nearly as much but we're also going to shim this too, get it nice and tight. We're going to clean off the inside of the hosel. Now I just use acetone here and a Q-tip and we're just going to go through here, get any residual stuff that may be in there. All right, so we are ready for installation. If you work out in your garage like I do and it's not technically climate controlled in some of these winter months, what I'll do is when I'm Getting ready to do epoxy, I'll put my epoxy in some, uh, just tap warm water, and it'll help kind of make it a little bit more workable. I just let that sit in here while I, while I do my prep work. Now we've already cleaned off the tip of the shaft. This, we're good. Now we'll finish that off with the actual club head until we get to the bottom of the club. Okay, so that is fully seated all the way to the bottom of the hosel. Now, I talked about shimming. So with this collared hosel in here, we still got a little bit of wiggle on this. So what I use is mudding tape that you would use for drywall. You can buy shims and all that other brass shims and with that, but I think this stuff works perfect. Like this, so this will go at the bottom of the hosel or the shaft like that. When we put it in, we get a very, very nice snug fit. Okay, now I also mentioned that because this grip is installed, even though we've got daylight here, right? Eventually at some point we're gonna create a pressurized environment inside of the shaft because it's hollow. And most likely the tape over here has come over so it's going to create a little bit of a seal so what we'll do is we'll puncture that tape to allow the vent hole to breathe now you can always test this by blowing through the tip of the shaft and if you hear that you know you've got an open environment just as an extra sense of security i've got a a tip here that's hollow all the way through think of it like a plastic straw or a metal straw and we'll put that in, kind of like a stint, so to speak. And then definitely now, we've created a depressurized environment inside of our shaft. So let's mix our epoxy up. Okay, that's good. All right, ready to install. I will put 
a little bit on the shaft here, just a little, and that is really only to hold our tape. Tape is already self-adhesive, but I still want to have a little bit on there. I will get the rest, put it into the hosel itself. And then finally, I like to put just some at the tip of the shaft, like so. All right, so let's get our shim. I'm gonna wrap that around, just get it set up. Put that into our club. Okay, give it a couple tamps down on the ground. Now we're just going to set the club up, right, so it's orientated with the graphics on the grip. All right, we're good, and just let it sit, and that's all we got to do. Now, don't throw this out, right, this is your unused epoxy. Keep this out, right with your club. This way you can come and check on this and 24 hours and you can see like how did that epoxy cure is it too brittle is it too bendy that's going to let you know whether or not you got a good epoxy batch um, you can mix it up as good as you want but every once in a while sometimes it's just it it just functions weird in cold environments warm environments this gives you kind of a little look behind the glass so to speak you can see what's happening in here by checking that out once this is done, all we have to do is just kind of clean up the hosel a little bit. Uh, you can do that with acetone and you're good to go. But I guess the moral of the story is here with these adapters, grab yourself a, uh, a kit or go to your local hardware store and pick up the tools you need. All you need is, you know, it's probably $2 worth of hardware. And then of course you need to have a shaft extractor like we have here if you're doing graphite. Steel is fine. You can heat up steel as much as you want and twist it off with your hands, with gloves obviously, and you'll be fine. But with graphite, you have to use an extractor. That extraction has to happen on the parallel plane. It has to work on one way, right? We can't have any twisting or other motions. It's gotta be a straight pull. So, until next time, make sure you swing as hard as you can, just in case you hit the fairway. G2 out.